Uh, so I was going to finish it off with uh, part three, but I have to include this little part. The movie, The Great Pyramid, K 2019, by the director Femi Krasnicki. Sorry if I get the pronunciation wrong. The history of mankind as it, writ as it is written in books is wrong. Actually, just about everything you'll see in this documentary in wrong is wrong. In many cases, it is so wrong has to require a new word for wrong. And we see a pattern of wrongness, which uh, you'd have to work very hard to be this wrong this often all the time. It's actually, it's a, it's, it's a scam. It's full of deliberate mistruths. Now let's look at their talk, their take on granite. Blocks that descend as seen in animation cannot slide in real life. A photo taken in the 50s and 60s totally contradicts the fact that the three granite plugs were released from the large gallery. The three granite plugs were poured and then stored there next to the entrance. Yes, you heard right. Poured. Poured granite. Wow! Since I'll be also later mentioning, mentioning basalt, uh, but specifically what is granite and so firstly lava lava is molten rock that has reached the earth's surface magma is molten rock stored under the earth's surface so if you've heard of you know uh, basalt so we start with and uh, things such as andesite are in the the bas uh, forms of basalt and uh, basalt is naturally magnetic as well i don't have video like magnetic anomalies in basalt um because it's naturally magnetic. But anyway, uh, basalt's lava, it has cooled relatively quickly under low pressures. It's at the Earth's surface. So molten rock, different chemistry, it passes through the vents, you know, it's exposed to all, yeah, different chemistry. It'll pick up organic material and other, other things along the way. Um, but that's what basalt is. Cools relatively quickly under lower pressures. Molten rock below the Earth is magma. Granite is formed by magna, magma underground, sorry, typo, cooling. It's cooling, it cools slowly. And by cooling slowly, I mean thousands, if not millions of years it takes to cool. And it's formed under very high pressure. That's why granite is granite and basalt is basalt. Now, both granite and basalt will also contain what are called xenoliths or foreign stones. This will come in later. I'll show examples of that. So before we go into the... the poured granite but uh, there's the differences between basalt and granite this is an important feature because uh, granite underground cools very slowly and under very great pressures that's how granite is formed two to three days later they unmolded the transparent lens a lens that focuses light at one point a magnifying glass the larger the lens the higher the temperature everyone can make their own solar lens with the recipe have fun well, for a number of reasons, this is not actually true. So the lens would, even if you poured it in a mould, the lens would then need to be shaped and ground quite precisely. It's quite an art to create a lens. You, uh, people hand polish, uh, hand ground, and try and make as perfect as a lens as they can for telescopes and these other features. If you just poured it into a mould, firstly, it has to be have that curve on both sides, not just one. And then it has to be ground quite precisely, and which is something quite of an art. So just cast uh, form forming a lens is not going to cut it. Is another layer to it. But let's assume that that was achieved. There are still gaping holes uh, that just make this whole thing quite impossible. With a five meter diameter lens, the temperature reaches 1,800 degrees to 2,000 degrees Celsius. The Egyptians have just discovered solar energy. Everything is melted, nothing can resist. Granite literally melts at once, like lava. The Egyptians poured this lava into clay molds. And here is the famous statue of the third dynasty, Huni, the grandfather of Khufu, in the Aswan granite. Nope, this is not even close to reality. There are few examples going around of people using lenses, a Fresnel lens that was uh, basically a not uh, a flat sheet that used to be used in old-fashioned TVs as like a you know to help project the image. It doesn't have to be giant to work. Um, but, you know, it's the how the lens works. And now a Fresnel lens can melt granite. There are examples of people doing it. 
There are also examples of people melting granite with more traditional techniques. But one universal truth about melting granite is that it will, because it's above ground, it's not under giant, it's not under the pressures and temperatures of magma, which is below ground. Melt granite above ground, it turns into obsidian, black glass. That's just the way things work. So you melt granite, it will become obsidian, black glass, otherwise known as dragon glass. So if there's a white walker infestation and you know uh, they come out of Westeros and you want dragon glass, melt some granite. That's how it's done. But if you melt granite with a it doesn't matter how you do it, it's it's not going to turn back into granite. It's going to turn into obsidian. Now uh, another feature would be so we go back. So I mentioned the formation of um, granite and basalt. Lava makes basalt. Granite, magma, underground, cools slowly. Great pressures, that makes um, granite. Now, sometimes the granite that's formed will you know, basically be metamorphic. So this is metamorphic granite, otherwise known as gneiss. You can see the chemical. It's obviously quite different to other forms of granite. A geologist, not even a, you know, most people just can see that there's um, a, a very obvious, in some cases very like blatantly obvious difference between uh, granite and metamorphic granite and nice. Some of the nice will look quite similar to there, but uh, again, a, you know, a trained eye will spot this immediately. So that's metamorphic granite. So even if you put normal granite, goes under the heat and pressure below the earth, it doesn't just become granite, it changes again. The chemistry in rocks and the way that they're done uh, forms very different. So uh, with a lens, if, if I were capable to make one and if I were capable to properly grind and polish it in such a way to, to make it an, a powerful enough lens, let's, give, let's assume that that was done. Well, if I were melting granite or basalt for that case, um, it does not return to granite or basalt. Any notion that uh, granite was molten and form worked, absolute pure, pure nonsense. Just fr fr uh, in, in the rubbish, this is just an established fact and there's no way around it. So the whole thing, melting granite, uh, even you can't crush granite up and then recreate granite in a mold. So even um, I'm targeting K2019 movie, but also I believe like uh, there are others who have suggested that the uh, granite sculptures were, were crushed and then cold, you know, turned into some form of, of concrete and then poured into a mold. Absolutely not. The chemistry is will be very, very different. Granite's formed under heat, great pressure, cools uh, very slowly and then becomes exposed to the earth above absolutely impossible no way to to do this unless you can uh, essentially summon uh magic um to do it so not done and dusted throw that in the rubbish it's time for that to die in this video we'll be using a lens that we have named big daddy to concentrate 1.5 square meters of sunlight onto a piece of regular granite with the melting temperature of 2300 degrees Fahrenheit to make obsidian and obsidian strands. Task. When By carefully dipping another piece of light colored granite into the molten pool, long thin strands of hair like obsidian are formed. As the base strands move further away from the focal point, vases harder than steel, like these in tracheandesite, dating from at least 3500 BC. Here is how the granite was extracted and what happened with the unfinished obelisk in Aswan. Again, that's a big negatory, big nope. Uh, for the same reasons you can't melt granite and bring it back to granite to make a sculpture or a block, you cannot do this with andesite or these other stones as well. They're formed under very specific conditions with, uh, once you melt them and it just changes the chemistry of these things. It just, uh, especially these large crystals and stuff it just no it uh this cannot be done the workers in the aswan quarry were responsible for extracting the granite in cobblestone sized pieces these are small pieces of 30 to 40 centimeters which were extracted from the molten granite with stone shovels okay so we had a massive rock here that we couldn't remove uh, we 
hired a jackhammer, a 27 kilogram jackhammer. Nothing seemed to work. We wasted two, three days on the jackhammer. We broke, I don't know how many drill bits of the jackhammer. Then we heard about a fire setting to crack rock using heat and water. So here we've just made a giant fire around the rock. We opened up the space around the rock and uh, made a giant fire just with leftover wood of trees that we had killed on the site. And uh, the fire has been going for about an hour, just over an hour. And just with the heat alone, the rock seems to snap off naturally. Um, Once cooled, these pieces were transported by boat to Giza, over 900 kilometers away. When they reached Giza, they were melted again and then poured into clay molds. Just with the heat of a wood fire, of a campfire, after a very short time, um, well, even, well, the stone, the granite will break. Granite is very weak against fire. So any heat, when this is very low heat compared to melting, would, uh, create these fermic shocks, these small cracks in there, and absolutely destroy the granite and the surrounding granite as well as the heat is transferred. So any notion that the, uh, the unfinished obelisk or any other piece of granite was molten, no, it becomes obsidian, it doesn't return to granite, and the surrounding stone would be absolutely shattered with micro cracks and would disintegrate uh, a very short time after. So again, this is uh, absolutely, a, no, not, not even close. To estimate the volume of granite to take away, the workers cut out this part of the quarry in the form of an obelisk, which was completely melted one week later and transported in cobblestone-sized pieces. Again, just a reminder, no, this did not happen. This is not real. It's just entirely made up as a fiction. Uh, molten granite would become obsidian. Here, a ball of dolerite fell in the granite in lava form, and it got stuck there for millennia. Nature does not do that. Nature does not do that, except, of course, when nature does do it, and nature does it a lot. It does it quite a lot. And uh, this is no mystery at all. So it's not just this K2019 in this time. You often see them go to the quarries. You can't use these dolerite balls, except that people who actually spend more than 10 minutes working at it use them quite successfully. And they often point to this stone as some evidence of uh, lost advanced high ancient technology. Well, it's not a mystery. It's not a mystery at all. What it is, is a xenolith. A xenolith is a rock fragment that becomes enveloped in a larger rock during the latter's development and solidification. In geology, the term xenolith is almost exclusively used to describe inclusions in igneous rock entrained during magma ascent, emplacement and eruption. Granite is a, made from magma, volcanic or an igneous rock. Uh, countless, countless examples of the xenoliths, foreign stones, xeno foreign lith stone, mega lith, mega stone, uh, in there. So this is uh, just again not a mystery, not a mystery at all. Okay, here we can see in close up some examples, like li li just millions, probably billions, of them all around. Uh, all we're seeing there is a xenolith, foreign stone. Very common occurrence, not to be confused with Xenolith Warrior Princess. The discovery of solar energy, there would have been no pyramids. Egypt would not have arrived where it arrived. Thanks to solar energy, the Egyptians preserved nature. Okay, we can just end it there. No, uh, Molten granite does not be magically become granite uh, again. It becomes obsidian, all these other features. So, no, everything that they talk about in this documentary is, uh, you know, almost everything. It's just a pile of absolute rubbish. Uh, at the very least, like zero research done by this. You know, they got how much did all these animations, how much did all this travel cost? They had a budget. It's not a backyard operation. I'm not punching down. It's like over two million views. It is pure and utter nonsense, and with all the other features in part one and two, it's deliberate. They, um, you know, one of you know, we all make mistakes. No one, you know, to err is human, to forgive is divine. 
but this is a series of of lies on on lies on lies trying to cash in on this sort of whole area as well and so just forget everything that they say uh, about granite and that goes with uh, molten granite and all these other features as well it's it's time to stop